I'm Chef Sam Chablani, and I am in Cebu for Sinulog Festival, considered to be the grandest festival in the Philippines. It is a religious celebration held annually to honor Santo Nino or Child Jesus. And I'm lucky enough to be here just a day before the Grand Prix. How important is it to the Filipinos? Very important. Because Filipinos believe in Catholic Church and we believe in Senor Santo Nino. Are you guys going to be having a big food party? Yes, we have so many foods, lots of foods, and most especially lechon. Sinulog commemorates the arrival of the Spanish into the Philippines and also the arrival and acceptance of Catholicism, the new religion. You have to have a lechon during Sinulog. This is the glorious lechon which is essentially a stuffed pig that is slowly roasted over an open fire. My name is Sam Trevlani, and I am a barbecue chef. For the past 11 years, I have been obsessing over Asian barbecue. Which is why I am in Cebu, the lechon capital of the world. There are over a dozen lechon shops over here, and it literally smells like barbecue heaven. Check it out, lechon! There's nothing better to understand a place and people than true its food. And no other Filipino delicacy tells us the story of the Philippines quite like the lechon. It is a day before the Sinulog Festival, or fiesta as it's called in the Philippines. And today is a big day for the locals at the Barangay Paseo. It is chaos right now at the fish market in Pasil, and I cannot understand what's happening. It might be a fish market, but no one is here today to buy fish. Instead, thousands are gathered here today for the fluvial procession. There's so many boats over here. There are more than 200 boats. We are waiting for the uh, Santo Nino to arrive, and then we are going to have a procession. Whoa, the boat is here. Yeah, that's the Santo Nino. We will be starting our procession here now. The ship at the head of the flotilla is carrying an image of Santo Nino, or Child Jesus. It was said that when the Spanish explorers arrived in the 16th century, they presented an image of child Jesus to the Raja, or King of Cebu. He and his subjects later became the first in the Philippines to convert to the Christian faith. Therefore, this nautical procession symbolizes the introduction of Catholicism to the Philippine Islands. Well, fiestas were introduced by the Spanish to really gather people who were outside the reducciones, which are settlements. So they were a way of uniting people and through the promise of a good time, also indoctrinate them to subscribe to Catholicism. It's much easier to control the people when they subscribe to a single belief system. The fiestas were to assure them that this new faith did not come at the expense of any kind of enjoyment. Amidst this celebration, there's something in the air that smells rather distinctive. The smell of barbecue. And there's a fire right there. Let's go. Oh, the fire is so nice. And he's literally roasting the pork right now. What time did you start? 5 a.m. 5 a.m. These pigs apparently are all on order for Sinalog. Fish is typically a predominant part of the diet here. But just for this weekend, they are focused on pigs. I found something. Whoa, check it out. It's so big. Not so big, it's huge. Why is it so important to roast a pig so big during Sinalog? All people. All people. I can eat this too. It's free? Free. Free. Hey guys, who is coming for the fiesta? Friends in the other place come here, then eating uh, eat for free. So everyone's just gonna come in. Yeah, yeah. 
during synagogue, locals would host a feast in their houses, not just for their family and friends. Anyone is welcome to join in. And in these feasts, the lechon is clearly the centerpiece. The question is, why? Turns out, hunting for the answer can tell us a lot about the history of the Philippines and their Spanish colonial masters. While eating pork at a fiesta is a happy affair in the Philippines, pork had more sinister implications back in early 16th century Spain. A few years after the Catholic monarchs retook Spain from the Muslim kings, they tried to enforce Catholicism on their Muslim subjects and expel those who refused. To sieve out those who convert in name only, villagers would organize feasts that served pork. And those who refused to eat pork were deemed false converts. Today, roasted suckling pig is also served during Christmas in Spain and is a popular dish in many former Spanish colonies. So, would it be safe to say that it was the Spanish who introduced pork to the fiestas in the Philippines? Turns out, the answer isn't quite so clear-cut. When Magellan and his crew landed in Cebu in 1521, they saw shamans offering pigs during rituals. So we can really say that pig is the centerpiece of every religious celebration of pre-colonial Filipinos. One thing's for sure, the practice of eating lechon during fiestas has been around for hundreds of years. None more so than in Cebu, which is dubbed the lechon capital of the world. That sure is a big claim. I want to know how Cebu has earned that reputation. And I'm told the answer can be found in the city of Talisay, located south of Cebu. I'm speaking to Mickey, who serves as a tourism officer for the city of Talisay. So the first lechoneros were from here? Yes, or? from the 1920s, vending of lechon started here in Cebu specifically. And then before that, families used to cook lechon. It's like tradition for special occasions and they find it to be a lucrative business. So they started to sell in the beaches. With pig farms nearby, Talisay City makes an ideal location for lechon businesses. What's more, lechon is a popular dish that Cebuanos enjoy when it comes to dining by the beach. So, being situated near the shoreline allowed lechon businesses in Talisay City to boom. So what started as people just roasting off pigs in their homes, they set up yes. stall and other people started coming because yes. some people just don't want to cook. But during the Japanese occupation in World War II, it fizzled because people feared the Japanese. Cebu was like a little ghost town. So those are the statues of the American soldiers that represents the liberation of Cebu during March 26, 1945 wow. from the Japanese. The Americans came here specifically to this beach mm -hmm. to liberate Cebu. When Talisay was liberated, it boomed again. Four years came, like the Americans first, and eventually many people from different countries all over the world come to Cebu to visit the island, and part of their stop is Lechon here in Talisay. Wow. Many Filipinos go out of the country to work, and then they spread the word, Cebu has the tastiest Lechon. So it's helpful to promote Cebu as the Lechon capital of the world. We are not the ones claiming it. It's the people who claimed it for us. And keeping the lechon tradition alive here are family-run lechoneros that have been passed down for generations. I'm visiting a lechonero who has been roasting pigs the same way for over 40 years. Dani's Lechon House is situated in an isolated area in Cebu City to keep the smoke and smell away from the residents. Oh, that smells amazing! During peak periods like Christmas and the Sinulog Festival, over a hundred Lechon orders leave this remote roasting facility each day. 
Look at this fire. This is the actual process of cooking down wood so that we can prepare meat over it. And that's what's going to bring big flavor to our meats. The pigs here are cooked over wood, which is a traditional way of roasting lechon. How long do you cook each pig for? Maluto to, to 30 minutes, to 30 minutes. Maluto na ni siya. Ang daggo. Alang mga gagmay, na 2 hours. 2 hours and 30 minutes. Kuha na ni siya. Lata ng lechon. It was so dry at first, but when Danny applied the oil to it, it just completely changed color into this beautiful golden brown. So, Danny, what else do you need to do to make sure these pigs come out beautiful? Oh, so, all he has to do is to poke it in these little special places one to two times, just to release the pressure that builds up underneath the skin. That helps us get the beautiful glaze that we're looking for without the pork being cracked. Let's go to our passing area. Mani siya nila itong ibutang, sir. Kuhan inside the pig, star anise and ground garlic. Star anise and ground garlic. And you mix it with a bit of water. water. Something very special about the Filipino star anise is it's not as pungent as the stuff we get back home. How much do you put inside? Oh, this, that's this is enough. Okay, after okay. that, salt. Salt. This one, I'm full. Oh. Bichin, bichin. Bichin, bichin. Ajinomoto. Ajinomoto. Inside. Uh, Two tablespoons. Oh, really? It's a large pig. So what I've done is that I've rubbed it inside here so that this part tastes as good as the bottom. This one is uh, onions. Spring put, onions. Oh. You put it inside. Once I put it in the lid, it smells good. I mean, I don't know if it's in the lid. It's in the lid. It's in the lid. It's in the lid. We stitched the pig and tied its legs up to prepare it for roasting. But there's one final ingredient to add before it hits the fire. Filipino soy sauce. Mm, this does not taste like regular soy sauce. So we're just going to rub it on. How much soy sauce do you put? Enough. Enough. It's such a classic chef. Going to roast a piggy, going to do it now. Wow, you can hear the crackling and it looks like glass. Wow. You can gently pull it out and you can feel the collagen of the pop. I want to cry. The flavor is so good. Oh, so soft. It's perfectly seasoned. I'm going to taste this stuff. The meat tastes really clean, without the subtle funk that's common in pork. I reckon that's something that no cooking technique, no matter how amazing, can achieve. It's probably down to the quality and the type of meat. Which is why my next stop is a pig farm, to uncover the secrets of the pig behind the pot. Every tasty lechon begins with a good pig. So I'm headed to a farm in Bogo City, Cebu, that rears pigs just for lechon. Dissatisfied with the quality of purchased pork, owner Ryan Parai started rearing his own pigs five years ago for his lechon business. Today, between one to two hundred pigs leave his farm for the abattoir each month. Yeah. I'm a little nervous, but I'm also ready to be a farm boy. Is there anything I need to do? Change into anything? No, no, that's good. You're all right. Come here, I'll show you around. Okay. Yeah. We start in the abattoir. No, we're not about to show you the slaughter of young piglets. Instead, Ryan is going to show me what happens after the slaughter, a process which Ryan says is key to making good lechon. 
This is where we clean the pig. It goes to the boiling water and then the hair. You need to have the exact uh, temperature of the water. The water needs to be at poaching temperature, something that's not too hot. It's not boiling, but it's hot enough to remove the fur and the hair of the pig. You do not want the water to be too hot, otherwise the skin will also be affected and that affects the roasting process. Wow, yeah. the, the, the skin is so clean. It's very important to be clean because they love the crispy skin. They love to eat that, so we have to clean it. And then we'll transfer the pig. Oh my goodness, this is so heavy. Let's happen. go. All right. <sighs> we have to remove the internal organs. We have to be careful because, you know, the vial, if you damage that part, it will affect the taste of the lechon awesome. because that's a bitter taste. The pork industry in the Philippines is massive. In 2023, the country's total swine inventory was estimated at 10.18 million heads. Over three quarters of the swine population came from small farms like Ryan's, with large commercial farms making up the rest. The commercial lechoneros prefer to source their pigs from backyard farmers. The supply of Pigs that come from backyard farmings are known to be leaner, meaning to say it's healthier and it's uh, it's more flavorful than the what you call the commercialized and the uh, hybrid uh, pigs. Ryan's farm has over 50 sows and 200 piglets. All of the piglets are meant for lechon. And I am about to get acquainted with these piglets as their cleaner. Do yeah, I yeah, wash yeah. the pig or do I wash the floor? Yeah, 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 the pig and the floor. Oh, I can see all the mud falling off. How often do you wash the pigs every day? Uh, four to five times a day. Four to five times a day. Yeah. Wow, they really look like they're enjoying themselves and they love the water. Let's feed our pigs. This feed contains corn, soybean, and other grains. It's high in protein. Ato ni gigamit gani nga feeds kay una pas pas yamo tubo nyo nindot po dog karne so dalera tama ka harvest. How much does one pig eat per day on an average? Kani Osaka one kilo and a half for one pig per day. Per day, yes. You split it five times. Ah! And how old are they right now? This one, kani dere mga kwan ni mga gikan sa pag win na nani sa mga one month. Ang kanang atong size nga nindot gikan yung lichonon. Kana mga 25 kilos kay iyang karne, nindot na ba? Ang kanin kong gagmay nga baboy, basa pag murag, basa pag unod, o ang kanang dako sa medyo gahit. 20 to 30 days gikan ka ron, pwede na na ito ni siya ma-lichon. Tell me about this breed. Itong uh, breed din eh, kuhan. Um, mixed breed na rin siya. So, native o large white mo nang itong gi breed din eh, para lichon. Uh, kay mas nindot siya sa lichon kay bagag panit ana mas crispy crispy ang skin so mana mani siya then ang mga kuan pod kana mga large white nga breed mga mayo siya buutan siya siyang mga anak iya so gamay rang mortality rate the large white pig is a british domestic breed that originates from yorkshire the native pig from the philippines is a tasty scrappy but small hog they're so cute! Wow, how old are those pigs? Oh, that's 25 days. What, what do I do? What do I do? Wow, they're so warm! Can you hold it? I just want to say hello to it. Uh, Will it bite my hand? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm a city boy in a farm and I know I'm a chef, but... No, I don't... I, 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 I should know. No. The word lechon came from the Spanish. 
So lechon is Spanish for suckling pink. But of course, in the Philippines, lechon has come to simply refer to a bodily roasted hog. It's a hotly contested subject, but th there's a high possibility that the idea of spit roasting pigs was probably something that was there before the arrival of the Spanish. We don't know that for sure. But one thing's for sure, archaeologists have found pig remains in many parts of the Philippines, with the oldest samples dating back 4,500 years. So the question is, were they consumed? And how were they cooked? To solve this mystery, I'm on my way to meet an archaeologist with over 30 years' experience and many old pig bone discoveries. So, word on the street is that you have discovered some ancient pork bones. All archaeologists discover bones when we excavate. So much pork has been uh, slaughtered or, or eaten by native peoples over the past. So you'll find them buried in middens, in trash, or uh, in habitation sites, or even beside burials, human burials, uh, ritually uh, placed. Can you take me back to the first pork bones that you specifically discovered? Well, we were excavating up north in 2000. Four, and this was a waterlogged site. We couldn't find the, the complete human skeleton, but at the foot of the burial, there was a complete set of piglet, a wild boar. How old do you think these pig remains were? The burial itself dates to the trading period. So I uh, think this would be about the early Ming or the late Yuan, so around 1400, 1300. Uh, yeah, that, that's our assumption because we found some shirts of, you know, a broken Chinese porcelain. There are five species actually found in the Philippines. The okay. four are endemic to the Philippines and cannot be found elsewhere. But the fifth one is Suscrofa, which was clearly introduced in the Philippines. It did not come out of the Philippines. Are any of these breeds currently used in Lechon today? The Suscrofa. They're called native pig in the Philippines, but they're not really not native in the sense that they evolved in the Philippines. The Suscrofa has come from mainland Asia. Probably China, went down to Vietnam, that's one of the theories. And spread through the Sunda Shelf, eventually reaching Palawan. This is the period of the last ice age, where Palawan was linked to the rest of Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, and the mainland. Is there any evidence that lechon was cooked by the natives? If you look at the early Spanish chronicles, they never mentioned that practice. They mentioned these altars, tripod, cut meat, cooked meat, to offer to the gods. But there's no mention of an entire suckling pig that's roasted. If you look at it from the scientific, from the published, recorded point of view, there's no evidence of uh, that practice outside of uh, the Spanish period. Are you saying that there's possibly a chance that the Spanish could have introduced lechon through whole pig cooking? Yeah, there's a possibility. But you have to also understand that roasting pig was not unique to, to the Spanish. There were native uh, cultures here in island Southeast Asia, uh, Pacific that were also practicing that, even before the Spaniards arrived. And so it may have been introduced earlier than before the Spaniards came. There's also that train of thought that uh, this may have been introduced by the Chinese traders who went to the Philippines and showed the, the natives how to prepare this kind of piglet. The Chinese would have been celebrating an event, a lunar event, whatever, and so they cooked the pig in front of the natives, and the natives would have wondered how, oh, it tastes so good, that's all. Chinese traders sailed to the islands of the Philippines as early as the 12th century. They brought valuable goods like glass beads, silk, iron, and lead that was scarce on the island. But some believe they brought along pigs as well. However, the foreign influence did not end with the Chinese, because after them came the Spanish, who imposed their colonial rule for 333 years. So, between the two, who probably had a greater influence on Filipino lechon? To get to the bottom of that, I catch up with local food historian Luella Alex. Sam, this is the kiosk of Magellan's Cross. This is uh, the symbol of the city. If you can imagine, over there's a few meters, a hundred meters away, that used to be the sea. So when Ferdinand Magellan first circumnavigated the world, voyage, they arrived here, they erected the cross that they brought from Spain and claimed the island for the king of Spain. 
and they stayed here for more than 300 years. It's a long stay here. Their long stay influenced, of course, our religion. They interfered with our culture. <laughs> Culinary-wise, the Spaniards brought us new dishes, taught us how to bake. Did the Spanish introduce lechon to the Philippines? No, of course not. <laughs> no, of course not. We had lechon even before the Spaniards arrived. It's a pre-colonial food because uh, we domesticated the pigs early on. So all over the islands, the roasting of the pig is something that developed sporadically, spontaneously in communities because it is used mostly for, for celebration. To explain further, Luella is bringing me to Rico's Lechon, one of Cebu's most popular Lechon restaurants. Oh, the food is here. Ooh. <laughs> I am very excited. Since colonization, how much has the flavor of lechon changed to where we are today? Remember the Spaniards started coming to Asia to look for spices. And along with their, you know, getting the spices, they introduced the spices to us. With the coming of the Spaniards, we learned how to use bay leaf. Bay leaf, see? And then the peppercorns. But we've been using clavos de comer, which is, is cloves or star anise. Which influence is stronger, the Spanish or the Chinese? Oh, no doubt about it, Chinese. Scratch a Filipino and there's Chinese blood in it. <laughs> you know, they were the first to come here, but when they came here, they did not think of colonization, I think, you know, the way the Western world interprets it. What they did was to come here and trade with us. And then when they traded with us, they started intermarrying with, with Filipinos. And then when they intermarried, they stayed. So even our cooking um, is so influenced by the Chinese. There are Chinese dishes that we have appropriated for ourselves, you know, like noodles. It's called pancit here. Even the humbak, the braised pork with layers of fat and skin and meat, of course. The Cebuanos call it theirs. <laughs> So, are there any uh, other additional Southeast Asian influences? The basic ingredients, um, aromatics that we use, the lemongrass and the spring onions, are really common in Southeast Asian countries. But then, lately, they have been adding other stuff. I know in Karkar, they put that pride in it. In Talisay, I, I really saw the girl pour a can of uh, pineapple juice. See. So, so, so now there is a sweetness that comes into the flavor, oh, the taste. So, while it's quite hard to pinpoint how lechon came about, or who had a greater impact on its taste, one thing is for sure. The Filipino delicacy has evolved to fuse together multiple influences. And today, that evolution okay. continues. And we're gonna go with new, weird, and wonderful iterations of lechon. I've learned that Filipino lechon is a blend of various influences from different cultures. There are Spanish, Chinese, and even Southeast Asian flavors. But there are also different variations of lechon within the Philippines. Most of them can be categorized under the Visaya style, which includes the Cebuano lechon. The Cebuano lechon is traditionally filled with a variety of herbs and spices. While the Luzon style, which is found in Manila, does not involve stuffing the pig and it's typically served with a savory liver sauce for dipping. But the variety no longer stops with two. Today, there are new varieties of lechon being invented. The most eye-catching of them has gone viral on social media. In 2021, this video of a black lechon being roasted blew up on TikTok, hitting 4.8 million plays and fetching close to 1,700 comments. 
I am traveling to Danao City, Cebu to meet the brains behind the original Black Richon. Hey. Hey. I have been looking for you. I've heard some that you've been doing some really interesting stuff with Lechons. And right away off the back, I noticed one other interesting thing is that you actually have chilies and bell peppers. Two very non-traditional things. Yes, if you will add more spices to the food, mm -hmm. it will more yummier. Like it will add more texture and more um, spices to your mouth when you eat it. Chef, tell me what this is. This is what we call albahaca. How was it? Wow, it kind of tastes like a mixture of like Thai basil, but it's also got those Italian basil vibes. It's like very floral, very fragrant, but also very restrained compared to the other stuff. Does this also help with gaminess of the pig? Yes, it can help um, to like um, to have the bad odor. Enough talk. It's time to get my hands dirty making black lechon. Okay, so I'm gonna just rub in here. Next, we will add chilies and bell peppers. Peppercorns. So I'm just gonna sprinkle this in. Ajinomoto. So much umami. Basil and spring onions. Just like that. Just put it here. Just put it here. Yes. So right now, we will uh, wash it and make it dry. So that we can put the, um, the black object here. Okay. So that it will can make it stick. So, make, so we're gonna make it dry quicker. This is a secret of how we are making black lechon. So this is a squid ink. We can use squid ink or a uh, cuttlefish ink. That's how you get your magical black, yeah. shiny black glaze that I've been seeing online. All edible, all natural. Wow, check out that crazy black hue. It's insane. Oh, and very sticky. We're gonna go in all the way in there. And we're gonna go... Ooh! Okay, I'm getting the hang of it. Oh, but it's getting stickier as we dry. I think all is well. All is well? And uh, am, I, am I ready to start the cooking process? Yeah, sure. So let me... Uh, Wee! Could we come here? Nice. Wow, this is harder than roasting a standard pig because you can't even see the way the crackling reacts. Usually, the pig will go from lighter colour to, to slightly a darker colour, but you are flying blind here. Yes, really a challenge for this wow. kind of <laughs> the charm. The one we're uh, gonna see this is the time, just the time. Basically, everybody just left me here and told me that I can't stop spinning this pig. This will be a one and a half hour roast. My job is to keep the lechon spinning, to prevent any one part from burning. The one hour mark is the most crucial, because that's when the crackling will start to begin. Jafet's master lechonero has taken over to ensure that the crispy skin remains intact. Wow, this looks amazing, Day. You can smell the charcoal. But we'll start from this part since it's the most, uh, I mean, the crispiest part. Very, very crispy. Skin, Skin cheers. Mmm. <laughs> mm. How was it? It's so crispy. It tastes like a really good lechon. I can feel mm. all those spices have permeated. It is not salty. Mm. It is so full of umami. Why are you challenging tradition? Why? 
lechon basis is really competitive. So that's why I want to make sure uh, I am different. Did you receive any non-positive feedback when you presented the black pig to the community? At first, um, they, they really feel that like black symbolizes like a um, dark thing, like a sad thing, um, someone passed away, something like that. The first black lechon was, um, we make it for her mother's birthday. She was really shocked. Oh my God, what happened? Like, what did you do? Wow. Yes, what did you do, lechon? And then we just tell her that, uh, you must try it, just taste it. And when she tastes it, she will say, oh, it's not burned. It's good. <laughs> the pig we used was over 15 kilograms. It was a huge one for a party of nine. And there was so much left over. But I was told that if handled the right way, these scraps can be valuable. I packed the remaining lechon to take away, and I'm bringing it to a home chef and lechonero, Leslie and Hambre. Hi. Hello, hello. Hello. I've got some lechon leftovers, and I was hoping you could teach me what to do with this. Uh, we're going to make the best lechon paksil. Paksu is a traditional Filipino cooking style, which name means to cook and simmer in vinegar. It's commonly applied to meats and fish. We're going to place it in a big pan. While the Filipinos may be extravagant when it comes to food in certain ways, they're not wasteful people. Put a little water. How much water? Two cups. Depending on the size of the pig that's been ordered, there is usually quite a bit of leftovers. And so it's quite common for people to ask for takeaways. And they can reheat it over the grill, they can refry it, in which case it's called adobong lechon. Put a little vinegar. Or they can make it into paksu, cooking it with vinegar, soy, a bit of black pepper. Spring onions. Mm -hmm. To make paksu, aside from vinegar, Leslie threw in some spring onions, garlic, oyster sauce, and sugar. Cooking lechon leftover is actually an exercise of different uh, culinary influences uh, uh, in Cebu, brought about by the Chinese and by the Spanish. For example, a lechon paxil, and that's very typical Spanish influence. And the other one is uh, we fry the lechon leftover. Frying is actually a Chinese influence. Is there a reason we put vinegar? Yes, it is also a preservative. A preservative? Yes. So it keeps it for longer? Yeah, two days, three days, room temperature. Wow. During parties, after fiestas, there are always leftover lechon. So why will we throw it away? So we keep it in the ref, then for the next few days, we have more paksiv to eat. I see. Mix it until it is tender. And it is time for a taste test. The black lechon, paksil. Mm. I think in the morning, it was a lot more pork driven and a lot more aromatic. But the latter version of it is a lot more comforting. It's a lot more soul food. This has just been revitalized into a completely new dish. How did these recipes even come to life? Because we are a poor country, so we should minimize the food that is left. Because in the past, we don't have a refrigerator. So all the over food, we use vinegar to prolong the shell life. So how come, even now in 2023, we have refrigerators? Why are we still eating these dishes? First importantly, Filipinos love to eat. Yes. <laughs> they love to eat lechon, so they, they have to ways how to make the, the lechon more tasteful. Just stretching your lechon out over five days yes, and yes, having yes, it yes. five days. Because ways. lechon is very expensive. You buy it for the 10,000 pesos and then there are many leftovers, so you have to be, mm. you have to be proved that you're the stingy. I see. <laughs> it is fascinating that a food culture so closely tied to the fiestas has a site that shows off the virtue of prudence. After all, Fiestas in the Philippines are nothing short of extravagant spectacles. And I am about to experience how over the top it can get with the grand parade of the Sinalog Fiesta. Wow, 
it's not even 5 a.m. and we're already out and about. But this is the best time to be in Cebu because they're celebrating Sinalog, where Lechon is the star of the feasting. From Barangay San Nicolas, we are preparing, and we 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 are um we are kind of hundred percent ready for. 100%. Ooh, this is our headdress. Okay. I think it it's kind of fit. Do you think it will fit me? Yes. Ooh, we have a face paint. <laughs> this is the first time I'm even doing face paint. <laughs> It feels kind of cold. I am... <coughs> Sinologue is a religious celebration held annually to honour Santo Nino or Child Jesus. According to the police, an estimated 3 million people are braving the heat to attend the Sinologue Grand Parade this year. Sinologue actually means graceful dance. It refers to the forward-backward step dance that represents sulog or water current. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and eight. <laughs> Thank you. I cannot dance to save my life, as you can see. Just go to somebody's house and eat lechon. Yeah, I love it. It really calls for celebrations when it's the feast of the San Fernando. The streets on that particular day, when you say Sinolo Grand Parade, it's really full of people. It's a Cebuano nature. It's part of our culture that we always uh, share uh, food whenever we celebrate, uh, even um, auspicious celebrations like Christmas or New Year. We usually share our food. To witness and partake in the communal feasting, I am back at the Barangay Pasil. The feasting has just begun. For the entire day, locals would welcome anyone into their house to enjoy a feast. This sharing of lechon is very much a part of the fiesta. Whoa. There's a pig here. Can I eat? Oh, sure. How do we start? Oh, just over here? Over. This is huge catering. Oh. Let's go there. We go there. We join them. Thank you for having me. <laughs> what does Sinalog look like without lechon? Oh. I'm just gonna walk into this house. Hi! So many people here. Oh, so much! It's like a huge build-up towards this lechon. Like everyone over here is waiting for it. Tikman maayuk ng walay lechon. Mura bag kulang ang imong handa kung walay lechon. Oh yeah! Thank you. Wow. Hmm. Hmm. We're about to enter. A household again. Come on. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Some food. Yeah, I eat a little bit. Oh, another massive, huge lechon. It's so big. This is a very small room, but it's still such a big lechon. 
Come, let's sit together. How important is lechon to synagogue? It is no wonder why some Filipinos are calling for lechon to be named their national dish. To them, lechon is more than just a dish. To the Filipinos, lechon represents celebration, family, the community, and so much more. A display of warm hospitality and generosity of the Filipino people. And an embodiment of the country's rich history of influences from around the world. All that distilled into a single culinary masterpiece. Lechon.